Lawrence, Brother Brian. Don't you got the study up on him? Well, think about this. How would they how would they portray themselves as a, a minister of life? We keep the commandments, therefore, see, we keep in the commandments. Mm -hmm. That's all they say. But you know what? The Bible says they're a liar. So it sounds good. It sounds like we're righteous people because we're keeping the commandments. Oh, we're doing good. You ain't no different than every other uh, religious cult out there that thinks they can work their way to salvation. That's right. That's right. No different than the seven day Adventists, no different than the Jehovah Witnesses, no different than the Mormonism, no different than the Ebionites, no different than none of these false people. They all carry the same pattern and they all teach a different Jesus. Right? Yep. So you got to be able to what? Know the difference. And the only way to know the difference is know your enemy. What do you think about this? Either Jesus did what he was supposed to do. Look at Isaiah 53, verse 11. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is what I've asked several people, and I don't get no comments from them. Yes, sir. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. Right there, right there. In context, it's talking about the Lord. You can go yes. up and look at verse 10, and you can see that it's going to be talking about the Lord. It says, the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand, right? Out yes. of anguish of his soul shall he shall see and be satisfied. So this text tells me that, that the, this atonement that this suffering servant is going to do, it will satisfy the Father. So when we look at the scriptures, we see that Jesus satisfied the Father. I think it's what Romans, Romans 3, verse 21, 22, 23, 24, and not right in there. We can see that it's clear that the Father was satisfied with the sacrifice of Jesus. So either he died for your sins. Or he didn't. And no. if you say that you got to work for your salvation, you're saying that what he did on the cross mm -hmm. don't matter. That's right. That's right. And, and oh, brother Brian, you I don't know what what this is, sir. I I I I, I, but, hmm. I don't you know see what that right here. But now. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God has yes. been manifest apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short, and are justified by his grace as a gift. So you're justified by the receiving the gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, I mean, Christ Jesus, whom God, whom God, whom God put forth as a propitiation. That word propitiation is tied back to two places, Isaiah 53 and Leviticus 17. Propitiation. Look it up in the Greek. And what, what Hebrew word is tied to? Strong's G, 2435. Hilastadion. 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 Relating to an appeasing or expediting, having predicating or expediting force, 
expository a means of appeasing or expediting or perpetuation. Use of the cover of the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, which was sprinkled with blood of the expository victim on the annual day of atonement, Yom Kippur. This rite signifies that the life of the people, the loss of which they had merited by their sins, was offered to God in the blood, in the blood as the life of the victim. And that pause God pause right there. Yes, sir. Understand this. When the when the when the high priest went inside this temple. He was given instructions. Only him, only him alone could do this. That's he right. He was given instructions for what to do. The yes, way sir. God, the way he was, well, he was decided if the sacrifice was accepted, was the priest would pretty much live, mm -hmm. but they would also of the burnt offering. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things when, it, when he went in there and he sprinkled blood, the purpose of it was to put on the mercy seat and, and, and if God was pleased, he would accept it. But if he wasn't, uh, the high priest was more than likely a, a cooked goose. Yeah, they had because, to Because uh, that's the reason they made him wear a bell around him. Because if he didn't have that bell, he couldn't. Uh, they could. They uh, 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 if that bell started ringing, they were they were yanking and pulling him out. And then, trust me, it happened several times through Israel's history. Mm -hmm. And I want to read something real quick about this perpetuation. Yes, sir. My complete. Uh, let's see. And while he's looking that up again. The focus within the Hebrew Israelism movement, these cults and any mm -hmm. other cult, Christ is not the centerfold. They listen, they don't even talk about the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. That should be a red flag, a burgundy flag. That yep. flag should be burnt up, Brother Brian. They don't talk about yep. the blood of Christ. There it is, right here. All right. This is a Jew, a complete Jewish Bible. Romans 325. But God put Jesus, it's going to say Yeshua, forward as a kapar. Do you know what the word kapar is? When we see that and we go back, we can see that word kapar is used on the ark, uh, uh, Noah's ark. It was put on there as a seal to keep the water out, right? right. Remember that? Kapar. It's that after kapar. A propitiation, expecta expectation, expectation, atonement, from the Hebrew kapar, which has a sense of a ransom by means of a substitute. On Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the rabbis pointed to the need of the Teshavah, repentance, Tafeli, prayer, Tazadeh, charity. Yet these alone do not satisfy the requirements of the kapar, as prescribed in the Torah, Leviticus 17.11 and Hebrews 9.22. Only Yeshua is the final kapar and mm. full redemption for humanity. Uh, Hebrews 9.22, and then, of course, we get into the Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur has long been considered the most holy days of the Jewish biblical calendar. The name itself describes the history of this day. For it is on this very day, once a year, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies to make of atonement for the nation. In a word, Yom Kippur illustrates regeneration for those who follow God's way of atonement. Leviticus uh, 16 goes into great detail about Yom Kippur ceremony, which centered on sacrifices to goats. <coughs> One goat was called the katat, was to be slain as a blood sacrifice to be symbolic, covering the sins of Israel. The other goat was called Isaiah, or a scapegoat would be brought before the priest. The priest would lay his hands on the head of the goat as he confessed the sins of the people. But instead of slaying the animal, instead of in, in the tradition fashion, the goat would be set free in the wilderness, symbolically taking the sins of the nation out from their midst. So it's showing a sign 
that some it's still they had to do a sacrifice, but they also had to take the sins completely away from them. But they had to do it every year, so it technically didn't satisfy God. But it says when uh, when he begun in Rosh Hashanah, namely repentance and self evaluation was completed nine days later with the atonement and the regeneration in the temple times. The observant of the day was more clearly defined as center on sacrifice. In 70 CE, however, the temple was destroyed. Hence, some perplexing question arose. How can a Yom Kippur be observed without the proper place of sacrifice? How can Yom Kippur be effectual without the proper sacrifice? The rabbis of the first century decided to make substitution prayer to Philly, repentance to Shav, and charity replace sacrifice in the modern observance of the Yom Kippur. There are your Orthodox Jew sects who still believe that the temple and the animal sacrifice need to be revived in Israel. The sect of the Temple Mount faithful is active reproducing in the holy vessels and priestly garments to prepare for the coming temple. They have attempted to place the first cornerstone on the Temple Mount Jerusalem, strongly believing that this structure will be rebuilt soon. But they don't realize with the destruction of the temple and the refusal of the sacrifice, God has prepared a better way. Correct. Now, you said something very, very deep right there, Brother Brian. When you had us look at, and I knew exactly what you were targeting at regarding the Day of Atonement, uh, regarding the two goats. This right here, Leviticus 16 through 7 through 10, probably a few more verses down. That's a typology of itself. Right? And I'm going to show you really quick because I showed you this once before, but I want to refresh you. Brother Brian, look what it says here. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the time of the, uh, at the entrance of the tent of the meeting, right? And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats. Which one we going to basically, which one is going to be the scapegoat? Which one is going to be the goat for sacrifice, right? One lot for the Lord and one for the lot of Azil. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and use it as what? A sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azil shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it. And it may be sent away into the wilderness of Azil. Now, how is this a foreshadowing of Christ? Well, let's take a look at um, first um, the perfection of the goat. Let's look at Leviticus 21 real quick, Brother Brian. Watch this. Right, the holiness and of the priest. Right, I'm just gonna read a little bit of this, and not I'm not all of it. So we already got 16 established the priestly duties, what will be done on the day of atonement. Now, the, the Levitical priesthood, the perfection of the priest, in Leviticus chapter 21. Watch this, and the Lord said to Moses, "Speak to the priest, the son of Aaron, and say to them, No one shall make uh, make himself unclean for the day among his people." except for the, clo uh, the closest relatives, his mother, his father, his son, his daughter, and his brother, or his virgin sister who is near to him because she has had no husband for her to make herself unclean. So the, the priest cannot be around anybody unclean. This is what the ritual that they have to do. They have to you know, go by. But let's continue mm -hmm. just a little bit more. Verse four, and he shall not make himself unclean as a husband among his people and so profane himself. They shall not make bald patches on their beards, nor shave off the edges of their beards, nor make any cuts on their body. So again, when Hebrew Israelites use this, they're taking this way out of context, talking about all the men got to have long beards all the way down from here to Calumet City. That's ridiculous. No, that it, this here is strictly for the priests. These are Levitical priest instructions regarding them. 
But let's continue. They shall be holy to their God and not profane the name of their Lord, their God. For they offer the Lord's our food offering and the bread of their God. Therefore, they shall be holy. They shall not marry a prostitute or a woman who has been defiled, neither shall they marry a woman divorced from her husband. For the no strip club, can they? They all they go to the strip club. <laughs> So and that kills Sakari. Uh, that knocks them out. They ain't no priest of nothing. For the priest is holy to his God. You shall sanctify him. You shall sanctify him. For he is offered offers the bread of your uh, the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you. For I, the Lord who sanctifies you, am holy. And the daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by Pouring profanes her father, she shall be burned with fire. Let's continue just a little more. The priest who is chief among his brothers, who on whose head the anointing oil is poured, and who has been consecrated to wear the garments, shall not let the hair of his head hang loose nor tear his clothes. He shall not go in into any dead bodies, nor make himself unclean, even for his father or for his mother. Yeah. He Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Did you hear the part that said that the high priest can't tear his uh, clothes? Mm-mm, but Caiaphas did. Hmm. So he Whatever. disqualified himself for being a priest. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. On when that he day. ripped his clothes, he disqualified himself to be a priest. Mark chapter 14, verse 64 and 65. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He disqualified himself. He wasn't supposed to rip, it, rip his, uh, his high, high priest garments. That's right. And you're not supposed to do that, but he did. So he disqualified him. He should have been fired that day. But let's keep going. Brother Brian catching all this stuff. He shall not go into any dead bodies nor make himself unclean, Brother Brian, even for the father nor or for his mother. He shall not go out of the sanctuary lest he profanes the sanctuary of his God for the consecration of the anointing oil of his God is on him. I am the Lord, right? Let's continue some more. And he shall take a wife in her virginity. A widow or a divorced woman or a woman who has been defiled or a prostitute, the Judges chapter 19, y'all go and read that, that priest messed up. These he, he shall not marry, but he shall take a wife, a virgin of his own people that he may not profane his offspring among his people for I am the Lord who sanctifies him. So the priest could not marry a woman outside of the Levitical tribe. They had to marry a Levite woman. So let's continue. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron saying, none of your offspring throughout their generations, brother Brian, who has a blemish may approach to offer the bread of his God. They had to be without blemish. They couldn't have no scars. They couldn't have nothing. They had to be what? Perfect. Right? This is all wrapped around Messiah. Okay? I want you to understand that. This is all wrapped up. You say, amen, let's continue. Uh-huh. And listen, this is all wrapped around Messiah, Brother Brian. But let's keep going because it's going to all make sense. For no one who has a blemish shall draw near a man blind or lame or one who has mutilated his face or a limb, a limb too long, or a man who has an injured foot or an injured hand or a hunchback or a dwarf or a man with a defect in his sight or an itching disease or scabes and crushing testicles. No man of the offspring of Aaron, the priest who has a blemish shall come near to offer the Lord's food offering. Now, hold on. Let's take a look at Sakari. They got scratches. They got um, peel back toes, bit back paper clips, all kind of tattoos hanging out in the in the strip club. Listen, they totally disqualified and the rest of the Hebrew is like movement. But I digress. No man of the offerings offspring of 
Aaron, the priest who has a blemish, shall come near to, the, uh, to offer the Lord's food offering. Since he has a blemish, he shall not come near Brother Brian to offer the bread of his God. He may eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of holy, uh, uh, holy things. But he shall not go through the veil or approach the altar because he has a blemish that he may not profane my sanctuary for I am who uh, the Lord who sanctifies them. And the Lord Jesus Christ was without spot or blemish. He was a perfect sacrifice. Now let's just a little bit more. There's only one more verse. So Moses spoke uh, to Aaron and to his sons and to all the people of Israel. So they knew this, right? Now still hanging on to that situation with the two goats, Brother Brian, that was a foreshadow. Both of them uh, uh, are, are goats. But one is a sacrifice, one is a scapegoat, right? But in Jesus Christ, yes, he was both. But it's really talking about the play out of what will happen with Christ. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Brother Brian, I want you to read. help me read this one because I can't read this look, one without shedding tears. Look, at, look at also, look at this. Notice after all this stuff that he mentions, for I'm the Lord who sanctifies them. So even all this stuff even put together really don't mean nothing because it's actually the Lord who sanctifies them anyway. Correct. Correct. It is God that keeps it sets you apart. It is God that makes you clean. God is the, the regenerator. God is the source of all of this. God is the one that's instructing all of this. Now, Brother Brian, I'm going to need your help to read this because I can't read this without shedding tears. Walk with me, Brother Brian, to Matthew. Hold on to those two goats, 27. And I want you to go to, I want you to read from verses 15 through 19. All right. Watch this. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted, and they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate uh, said to them, whom do you want me release for you, Bar Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy they had had him delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on judgment seat, his wife sent the word, to him have nothing to do with this righteous man. For they, for I have suffered much because of him in a dream. And now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus, the governor. Again. Stop right there. Stop mm -hmm. right there. Now, watch this. I'm going to have you read this again. Watch what happens. Read again. Uh, let's see, at the time, they had well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent this message don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered. Pause there. Pause there. Now, verse 17 mm -hmm. is the foreshadowing of the two goats. Yep. Right here. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Both of their names was Jesus. And this was the judgment time for which one was going to be the scapegoat and which one was going to be the sacrifice. And obviously we all know the answer to that, right? Notice again, the judgment seat judgment is about to be handed down at this moment and this area of the passage passed down verse uh, 27 and 19, right? Verse 19 is the judgment being passed down. Jesus, the son of God, 
the Christ is innocent, guiltless, sinless, but he was put to death. Why? Because it was already decreed and prophesied in the Old Testament that this was what happened to Jesus. Leviticus chapter 16 right there is what your, your glimpse, that shadow right there will tell you what was going to happen in reality with Christ. And Jesus Barabbas was the scapegoat going to be let go. Right? But what happened with the scapegoat in the wilderness? It was set free to wander out for the sin to go away. But eventually that goat would die. And it was said that, that Jesus Barabbas died out there. So I, I mean, it's mad. This this goes, this runs real deep. This runs real deep. And I listen. Folk ain't looking at the scriptures clearly like they should. And they making up all kind of crazy stuff, not understanding the true meaning of what God is trying to tell you. Remember, this is God's testimony. This is his book. He authored it, right? So who are we to infringe or impose our own opinion and what we feel that the scriptures should say. But see, a cults don't see it this way. They basically have made themselves their own self-proclaimed God and said the heck with what actually what God had to say. That's not dealing with context. That's not dealing with the scriptures. That's not true Bible study. That's not the word of God. That's not how you deal with the word of God like that. Right? Because we know that the word of God has plenty to say and it can what? It can actually what? Define itself. It's the one that's telling you the story, not we tell it the story. You feel me? So uh, I'll just read a little bit more of my notes here. And it says, the other Jesus Barabbas, son of the, uh, of the father, laden with sin, full of guilt, and he was released like the two goats of Leviticus chapter 16. All right? Go back and fact check all of this, and you will see that the two goats on the Day of Atonement, one goat laden with sin, other people released back out into the wilderness, the other goat innocent, blameless, will die. This is according to the Old Testament scriptures that we read, that the two Jesus, both are Barabbas, the son of God, father, uh, uh, son of God, and one a criminal, crim, criminal, sorry, laden with sin and guilt and shame, and he will be released. The other Jesus, Messiah, innocent, blameless, he will be killed, fulfilling Leviticus chapter 16. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1. Does anybody have any questions? We don't do false teaching over here and we don't enable false teachers, right? Who seek to distort the scriptures. But see, going back here, what this brother here is telling me, that wasn't talk to him. That wasn't the focal point in the Hebrew Israelite movement when he was a part. That wasn't taught to him. The focus is not Jesus Christ. The focus is them reading themselves into the scripture. He tells you this, right? Even one is Pentecostals, even though they say, oh, you know, Jesus is God. Oh, you know, Jesus, yeah, but Jesus is the father and he's the son and he played three different modes. They just canceled out the son. One is Pentecostals, they ain't saved either right? They can be saved, right? Hebrew Israelites can be saved, but not like in the condition they're in. No. Are they saved right now in the condition they're in? No. No, 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 and no again. Hebrew Israelism, oneness Pentecostals, Mormonism, Hinduism, Muslims, all of them, they are in false doctrine and they reject Christ. They teach to reject the biblical God. 
that we read about. Islam is too busy trying to dictate the scriptures and put the Quran over the Bible. How you gonna put something that don't even make sense? Y'all didn't come until sixth century. Go sit down. Hebrew Islamism is trying to put culture over God. Where you come from? 1886, you way late. Mormonism, they trying to put themselves, trying to be gods and all this other stuff. And you, you don't come until 1700s. Right? Bunch of Nabalites. Right? And Nabal TV is they spokesman. That part. Listen. Let me keep going. Shut up, chair. <laughs> right? I'm going to get a little bit more of this. And also, we're going to interject oneness Pentecostalism because we see a lot of when oneness Pentecostal or oneness are what? Turning into what? Hebrew Israelism. Jumping from one false doctrine to another false doctrine. Right? What a way to go down. You go from one heresy to another heresy or combining heresies and you you just moving further and further and further and further and further away from God. But before I proceed, does anybody have any questions? Is anybody lost in the sauce? No, it don't look like it. God bless you too, Brother Brian. I know he left off. All right, here we go. Um, therefore, when the false gospel came, it fit neatly into the void that my inadequate comprehension of scripture left open. There was a void. And so they came in and they fit that void. Uh, that said, they had proof text to back up all these false doctrines. Therefore, to the untrained eye, they seemed to know scripture, as I said, far more accurately than the average Christian I knew. Um, I, and for me, it really came from a place of thinking that this was true. Right. I didn't think that I was deceived. I didn't think that this was wrong. I thought that these guys were biblical and that they explained the Bible to me and I was obligated to, to follow their teaching because of that. Um, I believe that the Bible was the word of God and therefore was never the least bit interested in, in overtly anti Bible religions. Right. Um, but 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 this that presented itself like true. Technically, they would say they are true biblical Christianity. And it presented itself in a way, and it, and it deceived me because of that, because of my lack of study in Scripture and my lack of understanding of the true gospel. Uh, very early, uh, it was just my brother and, and uncle, uh, and, and we had almost immediately ceased from any Christian practices. We stopped going to church, right? We stopped, uh, um, we stopped calling God, God, right? We wouldn't call, say God or Yahweh. We'd call him the Most High or Haya. Um, we started celebrating holy days. We started to dress differently. All of this just almost immediately radically changed our lives, right? Um, now, mind you, no one around us is Hebrews. We don't know any Hebrews at this time. It's just us. So we're sticking out like a sore thumb, right? Um, so, uh, but even before, um, like before, like before I, I started to congregate and actually found other people, I would move to Arizona, right? So I was in Detroit, I moved to Arizona. And when I moved to Arizona, um, I met my wife and she was a Pentecostal charismatic uh, Christian. And the same thing happened to her. She had all these holes in her theology. So when I came and I challenged her on her beliefs, right, she was not prepared to defend it at all. She wasn't prepared. Um, and so again, I looked like I knew the Bible better than a Christian. I had answers that her church wouldn't or couldn't give her. And for the same reason, she was wooed by this false gospel. Um, so yeah, throughout our time of courting, various holes uh, of, of her understanding of scripture was exposed. And, um, you know, I took advantage of that in, in saying, well, this is the true biblical gospel. This is the true purpose of the law. This is who we really are. So I am, I'm a black man, obviously my wife is Mexican. And so I presented it to her, say, you are a child of God. You are a child of Israel. This is your inheritance. This is your purpose, right? Return to the law you know, and be saved. Now there was no- Notice what he keeps telling you. There's, there was holes in her belief. Now true enough, you know, she, she believed in Jesus Christ, but again, not studying the word of God, not reading the word of God, not spending time with God easily, there will be gaps. And these people seek to what? To come and fill those gaps with that false theology. That's how they get you, right? 
two ways they get you not reading scripture not studying with a scripture not not spending time with god and number two church hurt or they use the race car so really three and if you got these three going on you are vulnerable like he said to the untrained eye that is not trained in scripture right and don't and and not studying that's why the bible tells you to study to show thyself approved so you can divide the word of god rightly when false teachers come upon you and try to teach you this garbage like hebrew israelites you can catch it i hear what you're saying brother i hear what you're saying sister in humanity but uh no you're not my brother and sister in the faith because you trying to feed me a different jesus you trying to feed me a different gospel you coming in the spirit of antichrist with your crazy self you reject god so how you gonna try to teach me the bible clearly says that jesus a b c d one two three boom 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 this is not what what i'm comparing what you're saying with the word of god and it don't line up well you didn't let me finish no the bible says that listen if you're teaching stuff that ought not to be taught your mouth must be silent your mouth must be stopped I don't even want to hear your garbage because why you try to feed me death. You trying to get me in trouble with the most high God, right? El Elyon, <laughs> the triune God. And you think, bruh, sis, in humanity, let me show you what the biblical text actually says. But see, if you're not trained, if you're not spending time with God, People can come and tell you just anything, right? And it's even sad when you got so-called Christians enabling this garbage. Well, you know, that we're going to get to that part. Well, you know, they, they believe in Jesus. Yeah, they say that they believe in Jesus, but is it the same biblical Jesus, moron? I said that. As disrespectful as it sounds, it is moronic. So you telling me because a person throws around the name Jesus, you automatically think it's the same Jesus? How do you know? That's why they're pushing the, 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 the ideology. Oh, it don't matter. We don't need to go through all of that. Well, how would I know if I got the right Jesus? How do I know that the right Jesus is being taught to me if you don't teach me from the biblical text what the Bible actually says? How do you know that you got the right Jesus or the wrong Jesus if you're not reading your Bible? And don't accuse God not speaking and when you didn't open the book. You cannot blame God for your lack of of understanding when you don't open that book and spend time with God's word. That's not God's fault. It will be your own fault. That part. What you say, blessing? Oh, wow. Cherry love. This could have, have me if it happened to me if I had known the Bible. And it, that's exactly in spiritual discernment. You'll be all twisted up and girl there sit there and have you worship in a tree. Calling it Jesus. Check up, listen, sis, a little homework for y'all, right? You and everybody else. Go look up panentheism, right? Pantheism. They say, oh, God is all and all is God. Oh, really? So God is the toilet in your bathroom? Remember the statement, God is all and God, and everything is in God and God is in everything. So God is in your toilet. God is in your garbage disposal. Listen, don't make me, don't make me. We got to be careful. And I know some of these people come with soothing and some of them can talk cordial. Some of them can throw the gift of gab together and it sounds like it's right and exact. 
you better go and fact check that boy or they gonna have you out there worshiping your flowers, okay? Okay? Is God the depends? That Shut up, Cherry. Be quiet. Watch your mouth. Mm -mm. Watch your mouth, Cherry. I'm telling you what these crazy people trying to, they literally saying that the, your penny drawer is God and God is in your penny drawer. Brothers, God is your drawers, your boxes, your briefs in your boxer drawer. And, okay. Okay. All right, then now. Okay, leave it alone, Cherry. Leave them alone. Okay. Okay. They'll have your butt out there worshiping stuff that ain't you ain't supposed to be worshiping. You'll be out there worshiping the Xbox in a minute. Don't you let these crazy people sit up here and mess y'all over. I, for what, I can't make you listen. But I'm going to speak for myself. Y'all ain't finna hand me just anything. To these occults, you better get up out of my face. And that's why they hate teachers like me so much. Right? Oh, her behavior. Oh, she said the word hell. Yeah, hell will be your home. And anybody that co-signed, you silly people. They hate teachers that tell the truth that exposes them because their job is to beguile you with the lie. Remember when I showed you that article or that, 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 that breakdown of the, uh, uh, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist tell these people, oh, you're just fine. You're, 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 you're right on target and they be as off as a jitterbug. These buzzards are off. And you got some, and I'm going to say it, you got some so-called Christians, retarded Christians that's sitting up here signing their name to that. Hey, that's you. But Cherry Love is not going to put her name on the dotted line. No. That part. Because it's not the biblical Jesus. Right. And remember what I told you about them sitting up here calling themselves saved. We about to touch that in a few seconds. Right. But I want y'all to go and to take it. Not, uh, take note of this video. Why I left the Hebrew Israelites. My testimony by Oscar Dun, uh, Dunlap. Dun, Dunlap. D-U-N-L-A-P. Very powerful testimony. Right. Now, I will have no intentions on playing all of it, but a good portion of it. But I believe that you get what I'm saying. Listen, these people will have you out there worshiping a roach in a minute. If you follow that, they're going to have you worshiping them bugs. Right? So just a little bit more, and then we're going to get the next video. Here we go. No security and salvation. Right? There was no, oh, uh, you know, you come to this, you come to recognize this, you believe this, and you're saved. No, no, no. It's works, right? Works, works. You're falling in and out of God's grace each and every day, right? I remember thinking some days, like, I had a good day, man. I'd probably be all right if I died. Another day, I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait for this day to be over, right? Just miserable, absolutely miserable thinking that way as I, as I reflect on it. But at the time, I thought that that was the way to be a true Christian. Um, I know for sure, um, at the time of us both leaving Christianity, we had no idea what Christian apologetics was. I don't know if I've even ever heard the word in reference to Christianity, uh, apologetics, right? So not only was I not prepared, I didn't even know it was a thing, right? I had never heard anyone uh, uh, teach on 1 Peter 3.15, right? I've never heard anyone tell me, set the, set the Lord apart as holding in your mind and be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies in you. I've never heard that, right? They taught us what to believe, but not how to defend it. And what we believed, they only taught in a superficial way. It was very surface level understanding. Um, after about two years, yeah, and so, yeah. So when this contradicting worldview came, our Christianity crumbled. So after about two years of actively gather, gathering with a group in Arizona, where I was at the time teaching and preaching, there was an incident that would uh, later be very instrumental in my life. So 
uh, the elder of GOCC, he had two conversations with a Christian apologist. Um, and by this time,